Eddie Gabor is standing by, owner of Key Advisors Wealth Management. Thank you for being here, Eddie Gabor. Some of your thoughts here on the market. Look, I think uh, last week was another opportunity for investors to buy the dip. Uh, I do. I'm in the same camp uh, now that consensus. We've been saying uh, really from the start of the year that we did not see the Fed in a position to be able to cut rates the way the market was pricing it in. But I will say something that's not consensus, and I've stressed this, uh, the fact that keeping rates where they are and not cutting rates, I believe, is actually bullish because the Fed normally cuts rates when the economy needs stimulus. Uh, it does not. And here's the biggest risk to cutting rates, in our opinion, uh, that's not priced into the market, is if they do cut rates in June or even in July, there's a higher probability, in our opinion, that inflation will reaccelerate because cutting rates is stimulus. It is inflationary. Uh, and then they would have to pivot and go from cutting to raising rates. And that, in our opinion, would be the market's worst nightmare. So uh, we believe staying right where we are is the best thing for the market. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. This data coming out this week, of course, is big from a short-term move perspective. Uh, but we think the markets are going to be heading higher here in the near term. Uh, but we're ready to pivot anytime the Fed does start to cut rates. Because if they cut too soon, uh, that's going to mean we're closer to the end of this uh, bull run here. All right. So at this point now, um, how would you go about your advice to investors, thinking about what the Fed may or may not do? So right now, I would just really focus on the fundamentals coming in. And the fundamentals are telling us that we are seeing some reacceleration uh, from a global perspective. When you look overseas and even here domestically, the economy uh, has been pretty darn resilient. So, but you want to own things that will do well in an inflationary environment. You want to, in our opinion, uh, you want to own energy. Uh, you potentially own some commodities, broad-based commodities. Uh, we've bought small caps and mid caps. Our theme this year is owning things that are tied to inflation being sticky, as well as areas that didn't participate in this tech red led rally last year. Uh, so we believe the market will broaden out over the next three to four months once we get through this choppiness. Uh, and we believe small caps, mid caps, as well as emerging market areas and energy uh, could certainly outperform the S&P 500. So that's how we're playing it. We're staying tactically bullish. Uh, but again, the minute things look like they're heading in the other direction, we will sell and go to cash if we need to. Right. Understood. So what's interesting, I mean, energy, where do you think oil is headed? So, uh, you know, I think energy, one, it's not too much to think that we're going to be at $100. But even if we stay right where we are right now, uh, this is an environment where there's a lot of cash flow in these companies uh, that you're going to continue to see them do well on an earnings perspective, in our opinion. Um, and they really didn't do well last year. Uh, energy, although has been a violent move up, uh, you know, it's really just happened here in the last couple of months. So energy is an area that, you know, if we get a pullback, we'll certainly look to add there uh, because it's a good, strong, fundamental story. It's really a global growth story in the sense of you looking at China and India and these other emerging markets that are uh, starting to come back to life. Right, understood. Um, with the other areas, when you talk about SMID caps, are you concerned that a high rate environment um, pertaining to small caps, which they've, they've been a little um, volatile? They certainly are. The small caps and mid caps, they've really been frustrating because you know, every time we think they're going to break out, uh, they sell back off. Uh, but again, we're being patient uh, with those. And your higher beta plays like small caps and mid caps that have a higher volatility, uh, we certainly make sure that we position size it correctly. So it's not just what you're buying, but the position size. So we're staying bullish there. And to your point, look, if the 10-year goes towards 5%, that will be a major headwind for small and mid caps. I don't think it's going to go straight to that number. Uh, but if it does, we'll probably exit out. But right now, we don't think we're going to get to that level on interest rates. Uh, and we think the interest rates will stay range bound uh, and range bound is OK. And again, I think you'll see money flow to small caps and mid caps, just like the energy trade. They're all very under owned. And once they get going, they get going fast. So we're trying to get in front of that before it becomes consensus. Right, understood. Um, when you think about commodities and like gold, for example, which is at new highs, you said other commodities, you mentioned energy. What other commodities do you think have some potential to the upside? 
You know, you mentioned gold. We have gold in our passive strategies uh, for some clients. Uh, that certainly has performed really well. It's interesting, right? Gold is usually the safe haven. So it normally would not do well uh, in an environment like we are now where you're seeing some riskier assets uh, really rip. So uh, from that perspective, it is a little bit of concern in that sense, but it's doing well. We're going to continue to ride it. You can look at things like copper as well, too. Uh, and for investors uh, that want to look at more of a broad-based ETF that maybe has energy and gold and silver and copper all within one ETF could potentially be a solution uh, to stay diversified, but own things that will go up in an inflationary environment. Right, understood. So what am I leaving out here um, for investors maybe that have cash? Do you wait it out or do you start doing a little bit at a time? Well, of course, everything's based on their risk tolerance. But for us, I can tell you firsthand, we've been putting cash to work. Uh, we got pretty aggressive with it last week. We believe this market's going to go to no, new highs. Uh, we believe these names, especially like even in the semiconductor space, you know, they've been range bound since March and have kind of sold off. We believe those names will go through all time highs here as we go through the spring and summer. Uh, so we're in a choppiness period here. Uh, that's usually the toughest time to buy, but usually the one that uh, rewards you the most. So uh, we are buying dips and until something fundamentally changes, uh, we will stick with that. Tell me about banks. We do have banks on Friday. Um, we'll be kicking off the season for earnings. How do you feel about banks? Do you like any banks? And do you feel earnings season is crucial here? Why? Earnings are going to matter. I mean, I think as we move forward here, uh, this market is going to punish anyone that doesn't have good earnings. Uh, so you want to be careful and be best of breed in the financial space. Uh, we don't have a lot of exposure here. Again, we think we're going to get our alpha from other areas like the tech, like the small and mids and, and like our India trade that we've had. Uh, the interest rate market environment can make it challenging, especially for smaller banks with the inversion of the yield curve. So, uh, again, I think JP Morgan and the bigger banks will be reporting here first. It'll be interesting to see what they do. I would expect the bigger banks to have uh, solid earnings and then your smaller regional banks are going to be the ones that are most challenged. Okay, Eddie Gabor, Key Advisors Wealth Management. Appreciate it. Thank you, Eddie. Good